It's 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, let's get started. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending where you join us from. Welcome to today's 10 ml talk. I'm Wei Xiao from ARM. I will be your moderator for today's session. Series are made possible by our sponsors, Deep Light, Edge Impulse, Maxim Integrated, Kixel, Reality AI, Sinsense, and the strategic partner, ARM. Additional sponsorship uh, available. If you're interested, please email betty at tinyml.org. Two weeks from now on November 24th, we have another two TinyML talks from ETA Compute and Boom Logic. ETA Compute will introduce how to enable neural network at the low power edge, a neural network compiler for hardware constrained embedded system. Boone Logic will talk about their Ember solution, a complex ML based anomaly detection pipeline for microcontrollers. If you want to present in our tiny ML web talk series, please email your proposals to talks at tinyml.org. Our second speaker today is Alexandra Simonson from ImageMob. His topic is how to build advanced hand gestures using radar and tiny ML. So Alexandra is the CTO and co-founder at ImageMob. He has extensive experience of software development in areas such as mobile application, mobile gaming, and the cloud systems. Previously, he studied computer science at KTH Royal Institute of Technology. So Alexandra, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us from Sweden. Thank you, Wei, and uh, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, so as Wei said, I am the CTO and one of three co-founders at ImagineMob. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to build an advanced gesture recognition uh, application using Edge AI and the radar sensor. But before I do that, just a brief introduction to ImagineMob. We are specialized in Edge AI or tiny animal. And we've got experience from more than 20 Edge AI customer projects where we've helped small and large corporations going all the way from setting up a project to uh, creating a proof of concept. Uh, and we even have deployed products in the market containing Edge AI technology. And today we offer Imaginum AI, uh, which is a set of software tools as a service so that customers and individuals can create these kinds of edge AI applications themselves. And we also offer edge AI expertise, of course, and we are based in Stockholm, Sweden. And what I would talk about today is first briefly about what edge AI is according to Magimob, because there's some different definitions here. And then I will deep dive into this advanced gesture recognition application that we have developed for, for a set of earphones using the ImagineMob AI software. And then I will top everything up with uh, my thoughts on some of the possibilities and opportunities for Edge AI in the future. So to start with our definition of Edge AI at uh, uh, ImagineMob is all about pushing the AI model so far away from the cloud as possible. So we're not talking about running the application in the cloud, but we're also not talking about running it in a gateway in between the cloud and the edge device. We are putting the AI application right on the edge device, right next to the sensor, which is generating the data. Because we believe that uh, with this technology, you can build a completely new um, applications with lots of different at, uh, interesting attributes. So the first thing you can do if you have the AI application 
here is that you can create truly autonomous applications. Applications that can react to their surroundings regardless of whether a connection is up or down. Um, and you can also create true real-time applications because you don't have to send data off to the cloud uh, to make a decision and then back again. So if you're in a machine and something happens in the machine that you can recognize um, and you're able to stop the machine, if you have an edge AI application, you can do that in milliseconds instead of in seconds. Moreover, you can actually create ultra low power applications because transmitting data uh, takes a lot of energy. So with this, you can create battery powered applications and you can also achieve very strong privacy because you're only sending data when you need to. When you've detected something interesting, you can send uh, an alarm or a flag, um, but if nothing is happening, you don't have to send anything. And we are democratizing this space. So we believe that more and more uh, individuals and companies should be able to build these kind of applications because today only a few uh, companies are able to do this. And the way we do this is through our software service, Imaginable AI, which guides and empowers users through the entire edge AI development process. So all the way from setting up a new, soft, uh, new project uh, through collecting and annotating high quality data from edge devices. And this we're doing with our capture service. Then we have Imaginable Studio, which we will dive into today where you can analyze and look at that data and manage it into different data sets. Um, and then you are guided in order to build and train great deep learning models. The tool also helps you evaluate these models and find the best one so that you can finally optimize and package this application for an edge device. So if that is Imaginable AI and Edge AI, according to us, then what can you build with it? Well, there's lots of interesting applications depending on what kind of sensor or signal that you're feeding into the system. So if you're working with data from a machine, for example, you can build predictive maintenance or anomaly detection applications where if something goes wrong, you can stop the machine or send an alarm. Or if you're working with a motion sensor, like an accelerometer, you can detect human activity, um, of course. If you're feeding sound data into the system, you can classify different sounds or you can add voice control to your edge device. But today we're gonna talk about pairing our software up with a radar sensor. So, and what you see here on the right side of the slide is the world's smallest pulse coherent radar sensor manufactured by a company named Aconir, also a Swedish company. And it's, this radar module is tiny uh, and it, has, uh, it uses very little power. So it's ideal for edge AI applications. And with a radar sensor and edge AI technology, you can do lots of interesting things. You can um, recognize different materials or surfaces um, or you can detect deviations or defects in, manu in manufacturing, for example. Or you can create really cool gesture recognition applications and you can put them inside a pair of headphones. So that's what we did uh, together with Aconair. And we actually showed the working proof of concept of this uh, at CES in January this year, um, where we showed this application running in real time on the actual radar module, which has very, very limited uh, compute and memory uh, capabilities. Um, and this is an interesting application because it's truly impossible without edge AI. Because just sending the data off the device would drain the battery uh, and it would be impossible over Bluetooth because it doesn't have enough bandwidth. So without Edge AI, this would be totally impossible. And now I'm going to show a, sh uh, a video showcasing what we showed in CES January this year. This is my colleague Yuan performing four different gestures. 
and everything here is running inside the earphones. You see the radar sensor is in the right earphone here. And everything is being detected and classified in real time inside of the module. And as you can see here, we can even detect really small, minute gestures. And we have a very high accuracy in this application. So this, this was last year's, uh, or this was this year's CS. Uh, next year, January 2021, we're showing the same applications, but uh, application but running in real time inside in-ear headphones, which I believe to be uh, the first in-ear gesture controlled earphones in the world. Um, so that's what we're working on now. And we're also replacing these gestures with some um, some better ones. So those are the gestures that you will see in this presentation from now on. But developing a project like this, of course, comes with a lot of different challenges. And I'm going to dive into those a little bit. So the first challenge that we faced in this project was that we were working with, for us, a new sensor that we had never worked uh, with before. And moreover, it was a totally new use case. So there was no data available that we could use uh, going into this project. We had to get all of the data ourselves. The second problem, and this is actually a problem in any new edge AI project when you're working with a new sensor, that is, how do we get the data off of the sensor? Because the sensor is, is an embedded system, so we need to get it out so that we can save it somehow. And then we had the third problem, which was that in order to build a robust application, we needed to collect a lot of data from many different people in order to get um, the diff catch the diff difference uh, in how different people perform the gestures. And so we wanted to crowdsource this to make it efficient somehow. And with the maximum capture, it's actually quite easy to accomplish this because with the Mattermobile Capture, we can collect data from any edge device to our PC or a phone over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or a serial connection. So in order to get started, we could just hook up um, the sensor development kit from Aquanir to our PC. And then we wrote a little bit of Python to integrate the sensor into our software. And this only takes 30 minutes, an hour, uh, depending on the sensor that you are integrating. And then we can start collecting data. And the Mattermob Capture also supports capturing video uh, and other kinds of metadata from your phone or your PC, which you will soon see is a super useful feature. So once we had this up and running, we sent these Aquanir boards uh, together with our software out uh, to different places in Sweden, and we could crowdsource this, this data collection. And then uh, we enter in Mattimob Studio. So as we started to get data back from our data collection partners, we could just load it into Mattimob Studio and, and start playing it back. And now is where you start seeing the benefit or having the video recording here. So what you see here is me uh, performing one of the new gestures. And below the video here, you see uh, a plot, the red and blue plot here, which is the raw data coming in from the sensor. And as you can see here, it's very difficult just looking at the data to understand what kind of gesture is being performed and when it's being performed. Um, but since you have the video, you can ensure the quality of the data being collected by uh, these partners. So we knew that they were performing uh, the right gesture and that they had annotated the data correctly um, and that they were performing the gesture in the right way. So what you see here below um, the red and blue plot is some blue fields, and that's the annotations uh, for the data, uh, telling our software what gesture is being performed at that moment in time. So without the video, uh, it would be impossible to crowdsource data co collection like this and ensure good quality of the data. 
And good quality data is everything. It's the entire foundation uh, that you work upon and build upon in order to create a good AI application. So, okay, now we have good quality data. It's well annotated. Then we face our next problem, um, which is related to the data generated by the radar sensor, um, because there's a lot of it. It's uh, generating roughly 30 kilobytes of data every second. And this data could be process processed by a deep neural network, no problem. But it would co uh, cause two problems down the road. The first one being that if we feed the non-filtered, non-processed data into the model, it means that the data contains a lot of features. And all these features needs to be learned by the model. Um, and the more features to learn, the more training data you need to collect. So that costs time and money. The second problem is that it actually makes the model more complex. Um, because the neural network must extract these minuscule local features and then layer by layer combine these to more advanced features. So to be able to, uh, and, and the model would become too big and it wouldn't fit on an edge device. So to be able to process the data on the edge, we need to help the, help the model with some clever manual pre-processing uh, as you see there on the right, then we get a smaller pre-processing pipeline um, by adding some, some smart functions. Uh, but developing this pre-processing from scratch for every project is very, uh, very time consuming. So luckily, we have integrated a lot of different pre-processing functions inside of Imagimod Studio. Uh, so we have a library of pre-processors and Having a library of preprocessors in the workflow means that we can now build advanced models in no time, just piecing uh, preprocessing layers together like Lego bricks. So now both uh, we and our customers using the software can, can use this. And then when we've pieced these um, pieces together uh, into a pipeline, we can apply this preprocessing uh, on top of the data. And that's what you see here. So now you, you see a new plot um, with a much better visualization of the data. And in this plot at the top here, you can clearly see that it's the same gesture being performed over and over again in this recording. While the raw data below it still just looks like noise. And since we can see clear patterns in the data now at this point, we know that our pre-processing is good and that an AI model will be able to detect these patterns as well. And then we can start generating and building AI models. Uh, and that is very simple to do in the software. You get help generating models that, are, uh, that should perform well on your data, and then it trains them for you. But you can also go into detail if you're an expert and optimize or select the different parameters yourself. But this stage is usually not the biggest challenge. Uh, bigger challenge is actually what comes next. Because once we have built our first set of models, we need to test and verify them. And testing and verifying edge AI models is a real pain. Uh, to test on a device, you would have to go all the way uh, to C code, which is quite simple in our software, but the bigger problem is that you would have to reflash the firmware of every single headphone uh, that we sent out over Sweden to crowdsource the data collection. Uh, you would have to reflash the firmware of those headphones uh, in order to test the software. And then you would have to perform these gestures uh, over and over again uh, and test the system real time. And to get a really good test uh, feedback loop, we would have to do this on several, uh, several times each week. So it's just not feasible to do it this way. So what we need when de developing edge AI applications is a way to figure out 
exactly how the model performs before deploying it, since deploying it is so costly. Um, and our solution to this is the ability to superimpose the predictions from the model uh, that you're evaluating on top of all your collected data. And then you can play it back live like we did previously. Um, so what you see here, the subtitles you see here in the video is the predictions made by the AI model that we're evaluating at this, uh, this moment. So we're running the model on top of all of our data uh, and then we can play it back. So we pre-compute the predictions. So now we know exactly how our model behave every time step, every millisecond. And so it's like performing a field test in front of your PC. So since we have such great model verification and testing built in, it means that we don't need to push to the edge until we have a really good model that we believe, uh, really believe in, and that it will perform well. But eventually, of course, we have to push the model to the edge, and then we want it to be fast and easy. And uh, since we now have all the pre-processing integrated inside the model, we can quickly convert the entire model into C code, uh, self-containing C code, no, no external dependencies. And then we can push this out to our headphones. So that's what you see here uh, is that you do this just through the click of a button. You click build edge and this model is being converted into C code and then you get some information on the kind of resources that it would use on the device. So, okay, how are, how are we or Imaginum AI different to other software and services out there? Well, we have a true end-to-end -end solution all the way from data collection to a finalized model. And as you can see, we have solutions to the major problems that you meet when building real products using Edge AI, not just proof of concepts. And we have a very powerful data collection and data annotation and visualization pipeline. Um, and we also have an outstanding model evaluation and testing, which saves you a lot of time. And since we have an end-to-end -end solution, we can optimize for the edge in every step, all the way from the pre-processing through the model search and building and, and uh, training uh, to the conversion to C code. And to uh, top it off, I promised I would talk a, li talk a little bit about uh, the future of Edge AI or TinyML. Well, first of all, um, this trend is here to stay. That's for, uh, for certain. It just makes so much sense in many applications to process the data locally. But like with any strong, large trend, uh, I believe that capability will surpass all expectations. Edge AI applications will be deployed with every sensor node on the planet, inside your consumer electronics, inside of medical equipment, in manufacturing, and eventually, I'm certain, also in your body. And then it is really good to know that this software allows for sending only what you allow instead of streaming everything that passes through out somewhere. Uh, thank you for listening. And um, if you um, thought this was interesting and you want to try Imagine AI out for yourself, you should visit our homepage and you should sign up for our free trial program. And you get Imaginum AI for a full month um, plus an education session. And there's limited seats, so hurry up and please follow us in, on social media. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. So let's address some questions from our audience. Uh, first question, does the reader demo hand gesture also work with somebody else's hand? Yes. So we, we have collected data for, from uh, 20 different individuals so far. 
and and uh, of course we test it with people not inside of the uh, data sets okay. the training and validation sets next question how do you synchronize reader data, data and video uh, well there's very low latency here so since we're collecting the video from the camera in the PC, and we're also streaming the data directly into the PC through the serial port, um, they are quite synchronized. But you can also, uh, in Imadimob Studio, you can uh, control the offset. So you can uh, fix that in post, uh, so to say, if, if it's not perfectly synchronized to start with. Okay. So our next question, uh, it seems like the data was recorded in a clean environment. Nothing was moving around. Do you also record data in non-clean environment or maybe augment the data? That's a very good question. Um, yeah, we have also recordings with noise and people moving by and uh, um, non-gesture data. But now for these in-ear headphones, we're actually tackling this uh, uh, with uh, the, in the radar sensor, you, you tap it once and then you can perform a gesture. So there's two routes uh, to solve that problem. Either you collect a lot of data or you uh, have something um, to activate the sensor so that it's not listening all the time. And that's the, what we're trying out now. Okay. Um, our next question is regarding image mob uh, platform. So your platform looks really cool. How do you build it so other people will be able to use it? Is it easy for engineers to pick up and develop their applications? I think so. And we, um, we have, um, several customers using it at the moment. Uh, and after the education session, they are up and running pretty quickly. So there's data sets and uh, uh, instructions and tutorials on how to get started. So you don't have to know anything about AI to get started. Uh, it's, uh, it's enough being an engineer. And of course, we're iterating it through uh, and making it better and better with every release and, and easier and easier to use. Thank you. Uh, did you get problems with p uh, pacemaker since radar devices may interfere with uh, cardiac pacemaker? That's a, that's a very good question. I have to uh, forward that to Akonir. Uh, not that I, I have heard from uh, heard of at all. I don't know if that's depending, depends on the frequency or the power output, but uh, that's an interesting question. I will uh, dig into that myself. Okay. Uh, can you fuse multiple radar mo modules to get 3D gesturing? Yes, you can. Um, so uh, you could use two or more um modules in order to do that um, they are actually also releasing an, an updated version of this module where you um, can register objects moving in more than one direction so you can see if something's moving towards the radar or away from the radar um, but yeah you can fuse several modules but there's not a module that I know of from Aquanir at this point where there's several um, on the same ship. Okay, we only have time for one more question. Uh, what's the mo more suitable sample rate of the radar sensor for the gesture recognition app? What's the power consumption of the radar sensor at such sampling rate? So the sampling rate of the module, I think it's, uh, uh, I think we started at 100 hertz, uh, and then I think we 
moved down to 50 hertz because the performance was good enough. I have to double check, but it's 50 or 100 hertz. Uh, and it's in, uh, oh, I can't give an exact figure. I believe it to be in like a single uh, milliamp, something like that. But uh, it, I have to get back on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, but you can go, you can visit Aconir's, um, aconir.com and you can read more about the sensor. Thank you, Alex. We don't have time to address all the questions. We will uh, post the open questions to our tiny mouth forum and Alex will help you answer them. Thank you again for your presentation. So again, thanks to our sponsors to make this series possible. Yeah, I'm pleased to announce that ARM becomes TinyML strategic partner. Uh, ARM designs a family of Cortex-M microcontrollers and ESOs U, <clears throat> excuse me, micro NPUs for TinyML applications. A couple of weeks ago, we just announced our second generation micro NPU ESOs U65 for accelerated TinyML applications. DeepLight uses AI to make other AI faster, smaller, and more power efficient. Edge Impulse offers online TinyML lifecycle solutions, which transform developers' abilities to deploy machine learning for embedded devices. Maxim Integrated enables edge intelligence with their sensors and signal conditioning technologies. Kixel AutoML platform builds TinyML solutions for the edge using sensor data. Reality AI offers optimized feature discovery, compact embedded code, optimization toolkit and the tools for managing the cost of data collection. SingSense builds ultra low power sensing and inference hardware for embedded mobile and edge devices. So two weeks from now on November 24th, 8 a.m. Pacific time, we will have presentations from EPA Compute and Boone Logic. Please join us then. Our first APAC event, Tenimel Asia, is going to take place next week between November 16th to 19th. Uh, the event is free to our audience, thanks to our sponsors. Don't miss the opportunity to sponsor or participate in the event. Thank you all for your time and attention. We look forward to seeing you again in the next TinyMail web talk.